Hello everyone, welcome to PBER Cyber Security Lab Building Series. In my episode 1, I have showed you how to install Proxmox for our cyber security lab. In this episode, we are going to see how to setting up a PF Sense. Before setting up the PF Sense, we need to understand what is firewall. A firewall is a network security system that monitor and control incoming and outgoing network traffic based on predetermined security rules. It's nothing but there will be a set of rules will be there which is uh, you can block an IP address uh, or you can allow the IP address. So based on this rule, the firewall will be controlling the incoming and outgoing network traffic. It is a security gateway between a private internal network and the public network. The main purpose is to allow non-threatening traffic in and to keep dangerous traffic out from the network. PFSense is a firewall, router, computer, software distribution based on free BSD. You can be installed on a physical computer or a virtual machine to make a dedicated firewall, router for a network. You can download PFSense from www.pfsense.org from the download. So this is a website and uh, you just need to, uh, so this is, comes in architecture AMD 64 bit or Netgate ADID. If you are using a AMD 64 bit architecture laptop or any other things, you can do it. Uh, at the moment, the PFSense is not supported by the Raspberry Pi. So either you have to install on the physical computers which is a supported AMD 64 bit architecture or you can purchase the Netgate. Uh, there is a products or appliance are there. You can buy it and you can home turn. In my case, I'm just going with a 64 bit and all I needed is a ISO image because I'm going to install on the Proxmox. Mirror ID can be anything, uh, depends upon your locations and you have to click download. I have already downloaded this ISO file. Uh, let me quickly go to the Proxmox. So I have already downloaded this one and uh, I'll show you how to upload the ISO file into the Proxmox so that we, when during the installation, we need the uh, image ISO files to be mounted over there. Uh, local PV uh, depends upon your renaming, uh, but if you are going with the default value, it will be like a local PV. There you can click ISO image and you can click upload and you can select the file and you can start the upload. This is the one way or other way is you can use uh, FileZilla or any other core FTP, any FTPs and you can upload the file uh, from the FTP via FTP as well also. Other version is you can upload it if you are having a Linux based or Mac based uh, uh, computers you are using you can use SCP protocol. Okay. In my case, I have already uploaded the PFSense uh, version. So at the time of recording, the, the version is 2.6.0. Uh, so let's go and quickly create a VM of it. Click create VM. The VM ID is 100. The virtual machine that I'm going to create is 100. Even you can change it to 1 or something else or can put it on anything else but i'm just going with the default i'm not changing it and the name is pfsense and click next here is the os i need to select so local and the pfsense iso that is why i have uploaded earlier and the type i'm just going with the linux that version is 5.1 it's kernel i'm not going to change anything and click next and the graphic cards and everything I'm just keeping as it is. I'm not going to change anything. And the disk is 32 GB is more sufficient for the lab. But if you are uh, you going to use for your any other real time productions or those things and you're going to install a lot of plugins and a lot of uh, logs could be going to be aggregated, then depends upon your calculator, you have to expand this disk size. But in my case, uh, I'm not going to this is just a lab so i'm just leaving it with the default one uh, and the core cpu is i'm just allocating a one core and socket is one core so i'm just going with the default and the memory i'm just going with the 2 gb of a memory my lab is 16 gb 
So I'm just allocating a 2 GB and it's more enough for the lab. I'm just going to the next and I'm going to select the same network. Then after that, I'll be creating a one more network uh, for the because usually PFSense need a, a two network card. One network card is for a van and another network card is for the local LAN. So VBR0 will be uh, my van and uh, VBR01 will be my local one. So uh, after creating, I'll be adding on it. So these are the confirmation. So this is the all details will be asking on it. So this is Sazel. So I'll go into and give click, click finish. So the VM has been created successfully. Now what I need to do is I need to create a one Linux bridge and need to attach to the network as a secondary one. So to do that, I need to go to the cluster and uh, go to the networks, create Linux bridge, uh, VBR1, and uh, I'm just keeping as it is. I'm not going to uh, do anything over there and uh, create. Okay, so I have done this one. Uh, now what I need to do is let me go to the PFSense VM and hardware add network devices. Here I need to select the other one, seconded one. So now I have added a two network card. So let me go and start this VM. To start it, just go to the console and start now. To make it a bigger, uh, I'm just maximizing. The booting is started. Okay, so now let's accept the terms and uh, we're going to install this one. So I'm just going to install, click OK, enter. And uh, I'm just going with the default one. So I'm not going to change anything. And uh, I'm going to use the uh, auto FS systems. Okay, and uh, proceed with the installation. And I'm not using any RAID platform, so I'm just going with the default redundancies. So I'm selecting the hard disk and click OK. And it is asking you want to make a changes because uh, that what are the things? It'll be destroy the things. I'm going with the S. Okay, so the installation is started. Okay, so the installation is completed. So you would like to open a shell in the new system to make the file a modification and giving a reboot. So the system will be rebooted. Okay, so now it is saying that you, do you want to set a VLAN? Uh, because if you suppose if you are installing in a physical machine and uh, if you having a only one NIC card, in that case you can use a VLAN. Uh, but uh, in my case, it's a since it's a virtualization, so I'm not going to use a VLAN, and uh, I'm just going with the option no. And uh, Enter the WAN interface name uh, for the auto detection. In my case, I know it. It is VNet uh, zero uh, one. If you have a doubt or something else, what you can do is you can what you can do is you can go back to the hardware. So you can check the MAC address. So the 
this is the one the first one net zero is going to be my van net one is i'm going i have added a secondary so net zero one mac id is 1d25 so let me go back to the console maximize it so you can see that the net zero is the mac address is 1d25 so i'm going to select d d zero and the lan interface is pt 81 do you want to proceed it yes so it's now it is configuring a lan interface and it is doing uh, it's setting up the dns and everything and all let's wait the installation to be complete So now we have successfully installed the fsense so you can see the ip is also assigned it van is 10.10.1.25 26 and if you have a v6 is enabled you will be getting the ipv6 ips as well and the lan is we got it as assigned as 192.168.1.1 and uh, slash 24 so in my uh, future episodes i'll be using uh, this as my lan ip address so that has per design uh, let me walk you to the designs uh, let me take you to the slide so that uh, so the so this is my van ip address so i have created the uh, lan so all my machines will be under comes under the firewall so any traffic goes yes the the firewall rule will be what the firewall is rules we going to set it it will be validated and we will going to uh, monitor the traffic's incomings and everything and all so so all the VMs I'm going to create in the future episode will comes under the uh, LAN network uh, behind the firewall. Okay. So I hope uh, now you are very clear about it. So let's back to the one. So we are going to use the WAN IP address 192.168.1.1. Uh, this is the gateway and uh, the followed IPs will be 24. So now we will uh, log in into the console and finalize the uh, complete PFSense setting of it. So to do that, uh, you have to log in into a uh, internal LAN network. So let's go and log in into console to finish the PFSense configuration. So you can see that IP address. It's in the same LAN. So these machines are in the same LAN. So to access the PFSense console, uh, I need to use the gateway. So 192.68.1.1. That is the PFSense console. The port number will be uh, default 80 so 192.https 192. .hdps, 192 .like make it bigger so that you will be 192.168.1.1 it's a self-signed certificate that's why we are getting out click at once and uh, accept the risk and you will be in the password so the, by default the pfsense will be admin and the uh, password will be pfsense now we are inside the pfsense click next next and if you want to name something host name you can click it so in my case, what i will do is uh, cyber lab dot pfsense okay. and the domain is i'm just keeping it because it's flushing over there and my primary dns i'm just clicking i'll do it Cyberland. So uh, my primary DNS is I'm just using a Cloudflare. I'm just going on it and using the same thing as secondary. Uh, if you click this one, allow the DNS servers to be overrided. So if you have any other DNS servers uh, you're having it, uh, this will be overrated. So I'm just uh, I'm okay with it. Click next and uh, that time zone you can select it. Uh, and this this click next and uh, the type as DSP I'm just giving as the DHCP because 
IP address will be coming on it and uh, I'm not going to change anything uh, and yes I'm just giving all the RFCs one night private network to be blocked via LAN and the Bogan networks and everything by the I need to block everything so click next and LAN IP is this is what subnet mask is 24 I'm clicking next and if you want to change the admin password you can change the admin password yes I'm going to change it leaving the uh, password in a default it is not a good practice so i'm just changing into a so i'm not changing click reload so the reload is now in progress so please wait so it will come back so let me refresh yes so it is now so we have configured so let, let's go and quickly check for update if any update is there update has been done on it yes so the version is up to date um, so let me click this one okay. so now um, accepting uh, and yes thanks for the service yes yeah okay so i have configured the uh, pf sense successfully uh, so the cpus and i can from here i can see the cpu uh, memories and everything under uh, you can see this man ip address and everything under um, so with the two network cards uh, which is have a which is one is van and uh, which is one more lan as i said earlier we are going to configure all the uh, VMs in the future episodes will be comes under the behind the firewall and if anyone is trying to scan the van IP address uh, this is our going to be a van IP address so basically this is my public IP address so simulated public IP address and this is going to be my LAN IP address so this is how the enterprise functions so there will be a one public IP address and behind the firewall all the internal uh, networks will be sitting on it so so successfully we have configured the pfSense uh, in the Proxmox. So in my next episode, I'll be installing a Active Directory um, and uh, setting up the forest and setting up the domain controller and DNS and everything and all. Uh, again, uh, it comes under the behind of the firewall. How if you have any questions or if you have any uh, issue uh, facing on it, uh, please feel free to reach out to me via uh, Discord and. Uh, telegram i'll be giving the link in the description if you think the video is useful please consider giving a like and sharing show your support by liking sharing and subscribing to the channel follow me on the social media for the channel update thank you all bye for now see you soon with episode 2 thank you